on a tour of the Middle East, forging a post-Brexit role for Britain in the world, this is not what the Prime Minister wanted to be talking about. The fact that we work together does not mean that we're afraid to say when we think the United States have got it wrong and to be very clear with them. And I'm very clear that retweeting from Britain first was the wrong thing to do. Back home in London, the government argues that Britain's ties with America, military, cultural, diplomatic, are what make the special relationship. And this will endure long after the current president has gone. The Prime Minister will always have re regular calls with the president, and she has been explicit in criticising this tweet. And I know that she will always make sure that she calls it out where she sees it, and that is what she's done here. But a tweet from another minister, who is Muslim, made it clear the president had hit a raw nerve. Donald Trump has upset a lot of people here in Westminster. In theory, he's still invited to London on a state visit that would involve the Queen. In practice, it's very hard to see that visit happening anytime soon. The president has provided a huge publicity boost to a fringe far-right movement, Britain First, which has never come remotely close to success in any form of election here in the UK. Britain First wants to end immigration and ban Islam in the UK. Anti-fascist groups believe it has about 1,000 members. Its deputy leader, Jada Franson, whose tweets were retweeted by the president, is facing charges of using threatening and abusive language. She's thanked the president for retweeting her messages to his more than 43 million followers, saying, God bless you, Trump. God bless America.